And now an update on today's top stories. I'm Antonia Hunter. A satellite from Thailand has been detected 300 new objects in the Southern Indian Ocean while searching for the missing Malaysian plane. The objects were said to be scattered over an area southwest of Perth. The search has been suspended this morning due to bad weather. Barack Obama has met Pope Francis in Rome for the first time on his European tour. The president has been meeting with Europe's leaders in a bid to settle the disruption in Ukraine. A court in Turkey has been ordered to review the ban of Twitter. Telecommunication Authority has 30 days to decide whether to remove the restriction. The Turkish Prime Minister said he would wipe out Twitter last week after news of government corruption spread worldwide. There is access to the social network's free website, but those addresses are slowly becoming blocked. Field Marshal Abdul Fattah al-Sisi has announced he has resigned as Egypt's military chief in order to stand for presidency. The marshal led the overthrow of Islamist President Mohamed Morsi in July after mass opposition protests. Correspondents say he is likely to win the presidency given his popularity and lack of any serious rival. Thousands of people are at risk or harm due to murder, widespread police failure to tackle domestic abuse. Greater Manchester Police has been criticised by government inspectors for failing to protect victims. A report identified that urgent action is required. Chief Constable for GMP Sir Peter Fahi has called the report unfair and said the court and police powers need to change. Around 1,000 teachers, including many from Salford, took to the streets yesterday in protest over their pay. They marched through Manchester City Centre supporting the National Union of Teachers strike that also took place over England and Wales. And now it's time for a weather update with Helen. Over to you. Thanks, Antonio. Today will be similar to yesterday, starting off nice and bright, but slowly the rain will take over and take over the region. This morning started off frosty and bright and will continue into lunchtime. The best weather will be around Manchester and Cheshire. The cloud will gradually build and temperatures will feel a lot cooler in the wind. This afternoon, cloud will thicken and will lead to sunshine and scattered showers across the region. There is a risk of hail and thunder which will be wintry on high ground in Cheshire. So the next country we're going to in our global relay is Malaysia. The weather here is currently heavy rain and storms across the country, but temperatures are a lot higher in their 30s, which means there are some heavy thunderstorms around. So now it's over to Tark. Here are tonight's headlines. Two gatherings at two different places tonight, both with its own purpose. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak graces Malaysia's largest youth event, the Putrajaya Youth Festival, while opposition leaders attend a Thanksgiving rally at Dataran Petaling Jaya. Over in Jinjiang, a growing crowd begins to gather for the candlelight vigil in support of student activists. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak is at Putrajaya tonight for the official launching of the Putrajaya Youth Festival with a crowd of almost 3,000 youth. In his speech, Najib said that the government will keep their promise in carrying out all changes pledged to the youth who are the future of the nation. Najib also seized the opportunity to express his appreciation to the crowd of youth who were mostly clad in blue. Saya ingin mengambil kesempatan ini untuk mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada semua golongan beliau, khususnya mereka yang telah menjadi pengundi di mana dalam PRU 13 yang telah berlangsung baru-baru ini, rakyat Malaysia telah memberi mandat yang baru kepada Kerajaan Barisan Nasional untuk memimpin negara kita ini. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak also told the crowd 
that he had appointed Kairi as the new Youth and Sport Minister because of his age factor. He said that the 37-year-old Kairi would be more appealing and relatable to the youth because of the smaller age gap. Najib added that Kairi would help to form a closer bond between the government and the youth. Meanwhile, Kairi was impressed by the overwhelming response of the Putrajaya Youth Festival. Approximately 1.5 million youth turned out for the event, previously known as One Million Youth Gathering 2011 and Millions of Youth Gathering 2012. Putrajaya Youth Festival 2013 is a celebration of the National Youth Day. The event features more than 500 activities with 40 fun-filled segments lined up by the government agencies, private companies and NGOs. One of the event's organizing committee, Kairol Asnan, says that the administrative capital is the perfect place to hold the youth event. Meanwhile, over at Dataran Petaling Jaya, a crowd of almost 2,500 supporters of the opposition party have gathered for a Thanksgiving rally. Organized by the Federal Territory of Selangor, DAP, various DAP leaders also took the opportunity to thank voters for giving them another five years in Selangor. Pakatan Rakyat successfully defended Selangor by winning 44 seats in the 13th general election. Speaking to the crowd who are mostly clad in black, Kampong Tunku Assemblyman Lao Weng San expressed his gratitude to the supporters. Terima kasih kepada pengundi bukan saja atas sokongan kamu kepada, kepada kami tapi saya berterima kasih kerana anda telah memberi sokongan padu kepada kita kepada Pakatan Raya bukan saja di Pulau Pinak, di Petaling Jaya tapi di seluruh negara cara kami untuk membalas budi kamu hanya satu sahaja iaitu melakukan yang terbaik kepada raja di negeri Selangor oleh raja the crowd gathered as early as 5 p.m. to get a good spot on the field. They came by foot or by LRT in order to avoid massive traffic congestion. The Royal Malaysian Police Force has given cooperation by having a small presence of police traffic to control the traffic. Vendors have also came early to set up their stalls selling food, beverages and souvenirs to meet the demands of the crowd as they waited for the rally to start and guest speakers to arrive. The speakers present were DAP Publicity Chief Tony Pua, Bukit Gaseng Assemblyman Rajiv Rishakaran, and Sepute MP Teresa Kok. Arriving at the rally with raptures from the crowd was DAP advisor Lim Kit Siang. Two days ago, a rally was also held at Dataran Petaling Jaya. A huge turnout of 30,000 people gathered on the field for the Blackout 505 rally. The rally was organized by 50 pro Pakatan Rakyat NGOs to protest against alleged electoral fraud and misconduct in the recent 13th general election. The seven hour rally was the final of eight successive Blackout 505 rallies nationwide. <laughs> Tonight appears to be a night for huge gatherings. A massive crowd has gathered for the candlelight vigil outside the Jinjiang Utara police station. They are there in support for student activist Adam Adli. He was arrested for sedition and has been held in the police station since Monday. Our reporter Wisha Oi has the report. The crowd of around 1,000 people have begun to light candles for Adam 
and chanting a protest against his arrest. Most of them are holding banners and placards demanding for the release of Adam Adli. and are also beginning to stand watch to keep the protesters away from the entrance of the police station. With the overwhelming crowd, the Federal Reserve Unit, FRU, is on standby. The police have also given a 10-minute window to the crowd to disperse since this is an illegal gathering. But the crowd still refuses to budge even though the FRU has begun to move into the crowd. This it's the fifth night that the crowd of protesters held candlelight vigils outside the police station in support of the release of Adam Adli. We'll now take a short break and return with more stories coming up. The young and the old come together to pay homage to the Buddha. Are you looking for some Bollywood bangles from Mumbai or a sari from Gujarat? Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. As we all know, Vesak Day comes once every year and it is a holy day to Buddhists around the world. Also known as Buddha's birthday, it is the day where Buddhists gather at temples to pay homage to Buddha. Our reporter Chen Fei has the story. At the Buddhist Mahavihara, devotees flock to the temple as early as 7 a.m. The celebration kicked off with a dance performance to escort the monks to the main stage. Devotees sought blessings and made offerings to the monks. They presented flowers, lighted candles, paid respects to Buddha and lighted joysticks for prayers. Many proceeded to the hall to donate blood and pledge as organ donors in line with the Buddhist teachings. There were also tents set up along the road leading to the Vihara which sold offerings, candles, flowers and a variety of food and beverages. Vesak Day is a significant event celebrated by Buddhists to mark Buddha's birth, his enlightenment and also his departure from the human world. On this special day, devotees gather at dawn throughout Buddhist temples in the country. Hi, I'm Chen Fei from News. The Buddhist Mahavihara has been celebrating Vesak Day since 1894. Buddhist Mahavihara Vice President K. Don Prima Sari expressed his delight for Mahavihara's 119th year of celebrating Vesak Day. For that reason alone, we must be very proud as Buddhists that in a multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multicultural country like Malaysia, we have been given as the, uh, the opportunity as the second largest religion in the country to host our Vesak celebrations peacefully and with a holiday. If you're interested for some Indian goods and products, head on down to Mid Valley Mega Mall in Kuala Lumpur. As the largest Indian shopping festival in the Asia Pacific region, the 2013 Global Indian Festival is back with its 11th edition in Malaysia. It is like Little India in Mid Valley Exhibition Centre as the Global Indian Festival takes place here. The five-day event is a showcase in culture with various performances including Indian traditional dances. If you're in the mood to shop, there are over 250 stalls selling clothes, shoes, crafts, jewellery and beauty products from all over India. The festival will be held at Hall 1 and 2 of Mid Valley Exhibition Centre over this weekend. Over in Hall 3 of Mid Valley Exhibition Centre, Malaysia's biggest annual pets and aquatic exhibition is back for its 6th edition. 
Pet World 2013 is seen as one of the catalysts in stimulating the growth of the pet industry in Malaysia, with a variety of booths, pet and activities offered to visitors. Pet lovers will have a chance to participate in activities such as rabbit petting, pet grooming seminar, or just enjoy the array of pets such as dogs in costumes, rabbits, hamsters, and cats. Pet owners can also bring their pets for a free health check. Besides that, there are booths selling pet food, accessories, pet toiletries, pet cages, and facilities. The booths are creatively designed and decorated for the best booth design competition. The highlight of the event is the first ever professional pets grooming certificate and competition. This year, there are more variety in pet breeds such as the Sugar Glider, which brings more choices to pet lovers and also an eye-opener to visitors. The programs lined up for the weekend are the Cat Fashion Show, Rabbit Jumping Contest, World Guppy Contest, Puppy Training, and Cat Fancy Dress Contest. Lovers of art, books, and culture can stop over at the Art for Grabs event at Central Market over this weekend. This will be the 6th edition of the Annex Galleries, Art Bazaar and Annual Book Fest in collaboration with Kuala Lumpur Alternative Book Fest. It's a 2-day arts and craft bazaar featuring over 20 stalls selling art, photography, notebooks and accessories. All merchandises are on sale and are handmade for under 100 ringgit per item. The event also features over 20 stalls by local indie publishers such as Buku Fixi, Selot Press, Legend Press, and Studio Anai Anai. Besides that, the event also holds book launches, screenings, and discussion for independent filmmakers such as the recent Malay debut movie, Kill. This edition of Art for Grabs is sponsored by Buku Fixi. All the events are free and open to the public. It's time for a short break before we return with more stories. After the break. 374 participants from 12 university colleges turn out for the regional level of Masiswa Games. Our special reporters team investigates the homeless for an insight when KL goes dark. Stay with us for the full report. Now to the sports updates. Nothing brings people together more than sports. The regional level of the annual Masiswa Games hosted by Tunku Abdul Rahman University College, Ta UC, had a turnout of 374 participants from 12 university colleges. Two new sports of 10-pin bowling and tennis are introduced into this year's Masiswa Games. Among the 12 university colleges were Ta UC, KLMUC, Uni Raza, Uni KL, and UCSI. Organized by Majlis Sukan IPTS Malaysia, the three-day sports event witnessed high-spirited athletic performances among the participants. The prize-giving ceremony was attended by the Ta UC Principal Dato Dr. Tan Chi Kyok and the Chairman of Masiswa Professor Dr. Kamal Nasharuddin. The champion of each of the six sports categories will represent their respective institute in the national level this October. In his welcoming speech, Dato Dr. Tan Chi Kyok hopes that this sports event will produce students who not only excel academically but also in sports. He added that both leads to a holistic education. Now good sportsmanship through involvement in sports also develop a person's teamwork, leadership and ethical values. Now, because the highest standard in sportsmanship, which are practiced in this field, will be absorbed into one's personality and become his or her code of ethics. In local football news, Selangor FC triumphed against PKNSFC when they won 2 1. The Red Giants climbed to the second place in the Malaysian Super League standings after clinching three points from their victory at the Shah Alam Stadium. In the first half, PKNS took the lead with fierce attacks. 
the home team got the better of Slango when Mohamed Nizab Ayub opened the scoring with an overhead kick in the 14th minute. However, Slango came back strong in the second half when Slango substitute Mohamed Raimi Mohamed No turned the table against PKNS. Raimi neatly chested down an inch-perfect cross from Amri Yahya to slot an equaliser in the 62nd minute. Seven minutes later, he scored his second of the night, poking home a low cross which put Slango in front with the lead. Slango played a better game in the second half, having better possession of the ball and creating more attempts on target. Their improved gameplay gave fewer chances to PKNS who could not produce a better result. The match ended with a 2-1 victory for Slango. Slango is four points short from Lions 12, which is the leading team in the standings. Before we end the news, here's a recap of tonight's headlines. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak celebrates youth at the Putrajaya Youth Festival, while opposition leaders thank voters at Dataran Petaling Jaya. And in Jinjiang, a vast crowd of people in demand for the freedom of student activist Adam Adli. With that, we'll conclude tonight's TV news with a live fireworks show of the Putrajaya Youth Festival's closing ceremony. Thanks for watching and have a good weekend.